Hey, what's going on? Welcome to uh, the YouTube version of the book on hosting, How Not to Suck as an MC by Dan Rosenberg. That's me. And uh, the back of the book has a really great picture where I still have some hair. That's wonderful. Uh, so basically what happened was in 2006, I wrote this book. And about five years later, I decided to write an update. And I didn't. And then around 10 years later, I was going to write an update. And I didn't. And the 15 year mark, I didn't. So here we are, what is it, 18 years later. And I decided I'm not going to try to write another book. I'm just going to put this online, give it away right here on this YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe, obviously. I have to say that. Ring the bell, as the kids say. And uh, what we're going to do is every week uh, or so, I will have an interview with a different comedian or person from my comedy world. And we'll discuss one, each, each one of the 25 rules that are in the book on hosting, how not to suck as an MC. And I will say right off the bat that will this book make you a great MC? No. It doesn't say how to become a great MC. It says how not to suck. And that's the important thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through each of the 25 rules real quick on this first video. And then as we progress, if you watch nothing else, just watch this video. It'll make you a better MC. And it'll make it so you don't suck. The reason, first of the reason I made the book in the first place is I had a little comedy club. And by comedy club, I mean, we're in the closet of an Italian restaurant in Culver City once or twice a week. But we did a weekly comedy show and you had, a, you know, having an MC is important. And, you know, I would MC a lot of the shows. And when I wasn't there, someone else would MC. We'd have various MCs. And every once in a while, some comics would call me and complain and say, yeah, 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 you need to write down some rules when you have your MCs come in. And a lot of clubs I go to now, they'll have rules for the MC, like laminated and written. Some of them are right out of this book. And some people, after I released this book, said that every comedy club in America should have a copy of this sitting in their green room. So by all means, I'm sure we'll have a link somewhere where you can click if you want to actually buy this exact copy, not this exact copy, but you can still buy this on Amazon if you want the hard copy. And I make like 12 cents. So please, I've, I've, I'm a hundred air from this book. So there are 25 rules. The rules are pretty simple. Uh, and, you know, chapter one, right off the bat, why I wrote this book. And, you know, it's not hard to know why I wrote this book. Uh, I just wanted MCs not to suck, just to bring up the game a little bit. And in 18 years, a lot of new people have joined the comedy world, a lot. A lot have left too, but, you know, it's, it's really easy for an MC to ruin a show. And so that's what, if you follow these rules as the MC, you won't suck. That's the main reason. So chapter one is actually why I wrote this book. And it goes through every reason why, it goes through the history of MCs. There's a lot in this book that I'm not gonna go over right now. The main thing I'm gonna go over is just the actual rules. And in this book, you can also find some words of wisdom from other people that, that have hosted. There's a lot of comedians that I, I quoted in here, but uh, and there's even a bonus section, the unwritten rules of stand-up comedy. So that might help too. But if we go right to rule number one, I, I said that, was, uh, we're going to start here. Rule number one. There it is, rule number one. And I'm going to be looking at my screen. I'm going to be looking at the book. I don't have the whole thing memorized. I wrote it 18 years ago. Uh, rule number one, the audience must like you. Very important. You are the host of this party. If they don't like you, the party will suck. So if you're not a likable comedian, you could still be a very funny comedian. You're just not very likable. You're probably not going to be a good host. Would you go to a party of someone's house, at someone's house, if, if you didn't like them? Probably not. So please be likable. Number two, rule number two, never work blue as the MC. Why? Uh, I've changed this rule a little bit. 
never start blue as the MC. You know, and by blue, I mean, you know, F bombs and swearing and vulgarities. You need to kind of be the the balance of the entire show. If you come up and you're F this, F that, and the next comic comes up and they're doing, you know, material about being Christian or about their grandmother, you know, and they brought a bunch of people to that show, you're going to turn off a lot of people. Being clean is never banned. No one ever says we can't air your material because it's clean. So when you're working as the MC, especially if you're starting out, just start off clean. It's, it's not that hard. You don't have to start right into F jokes. Uh, rule number three goes right into uh, the being likable and not going blue. Don't do politics. Don't open with jokes about whichever president is in office at this moment. Uh, who knows when you're watching this? I'm recording this. Uh, it's July 15th. A lot has just happened in the political world. Don't talk about it. When you're the MC, just, again, you're the vanilla. You're just keeping it nice and balanced. You're the base of the show. You're the foundation of the show. And there's a good chance you're going to piss off 50% of your crowd if you go blue. I mean, if you go political. Now, if you're hosting a political event, obviously, you know, know your audience. Number four, talk to the audience. Don't talk at the audience. Uh, a lot of times, comics get up there and they're just, you know, looking like this and doing their material. Talk to the audience. Get involved. Let them know you're there. Some comics can do their act with or without an audience. That happens. Uh, but you have a crowd of people that are there to watch the show. Uh, get them involved. And that goes right into rule five. Get at least three interactions. What do I mean by that? It can be as simple as, hey, everybody, welcome out. To Give yourselves a big hand for coming out tonight. There's one interaction. You've, you've said something, the audience responded. Get three interactions, things that you say that they respond to. Hi, a big hand for uh, yourselves for giving a big hand. A big hand for the chandelier, a big hand for the carpet, something. Get them involved in the show and let them know you're in control. You say something, they respond. Some comics like to do little improv games at the beginning or, you know, hey, the left side, you do this, right side, you do that. Ladies, you do this, men, you do that. Who's celebrating something tonight? Big hand for them. Get the audience involved. First 15 seconds, me and like get, boom. As soon as you get up on stage, get them involved. Rule number six, never go right into material. You cannot just walk up as the MC and say, so my mother-in-law doesn't work. You have to slow down. You have to start. You're probably not going to have an intro. So what do you do if you don't have an intro? Well, you can always introduce yourself. But you come up, you tell everybody who you are, welcome them to the show, welcome them to the show, explain here, here's what's going to happen. Here's, here's, here's the show. You know, here are the rules. You know, if the venue has a, a weird place to go to the bathroom, you know, you have to go down a hall, make a left, the combination is seven, four, you know, whatever. Uh, tell them to turn their phones off. Whatever the rules are, get that up front. And you will have plenty of opportunity. When you're the MC, that's one of the advantages. You have a lot of opportunities to get, to get your, your material out. Rule number seven, oh, move the mic stand out of the way. If you take the mic out of the stand. If you leave the mic in the stand, which I tend to do, it doesn't matter. But if you take the mic out of the stand, and this is just a good rule for comedy in general, move the mic stand out of the way. I, I remember a booker telling me, was, he was watching videotapes, this is a long time ago, and he put a videotape in, and if the comic took the mic out and didn't move the stand out of the way, he turned the tape off and he was done. He goes, that's an amateur, they don't know what they're doing. That quick. So move the mic stand out of the way. And don't do the joke, if you're, especially if you're a large person, let me move this out of the way so you can see me better. I think every large comic has done that. Uh, also, adjust the mic. If you leave it in the stand, adjust it. So you're not hunched over or you're not on your tippy toes. Adjust it. Uh, rule number eight, leave the stage the way you found it. I know it sounds like something your mom would say, but, you know, put the stool back where it was. Put the mic stand, mic back in the mic stand. Don't just hand the mic off to the comic. Because what if they're a comic that likes it in the stand? Start every, everyone should start in the same space. Again, you're the, you're the base, you're the vanilla. 
You're the, the foundation. Put everything back the way it was. If the comic before you messes up the stage and they just they drop the mic and walk off, your first thing you do is walk up, put the mic in the stand, put the stool where it was, whatever. Clean up the confetti, the watermelon, whatever. Uh, a lot of times comics will ask you to bring something up. Like, hey, can you lay my set list down? Can you lay my drink down? Can you lay my CD or my DVD or my my T-shirt or my out whatever they're they might have a prop they're going to use later. Don't have an attitude. Yeah, it's great. Help them out. Make the show as good as possible. Rule number nine: Give a great intro. This may seem obvious. It's not. Always have note cards with you. You know, get the little three three by five note cards and have a pen with you. And ask each comic, what would you like for your intro? And the comic says, I don't know, just say anything. Then use the old sales trick. Okay, I, if you did know what you wanted for an intro, what would it be? Get something from them. What have you done recently? Uh, what's, have you been on a TV show? How do you pronounce your name? Nothing worse than saying their name wrong. If it's spelled funny and you can't exactly tell, write it out phonetically. So you say their name right. There's nothing wrong with reading off a card. And the joke, and it happens, every comic does it. This next comic's a good friend of mine. Uh, Bob Smithy, Smith. Everybody does that. Nothing wrong with it, but uh, it really is uh, important to say their name correctly. And that leads to the next part of this rule. Their name is the punchline. Always say their name last. Don't say, hey, Dan Rosemick's come up to the stage. He's a very funny guy. Uh, you may have seen him on something. Now what do you do? You just, you just left it hanging. He, does, he doesn't know to come up. I think in the book I have, uh, all right, are you ready for your next comic? Dan Fogelberg's a funny guy. He told me once he was on some show, but whatever. I'm sure he'll kill. Here he is. There's one version. Or your next comedian has been seen on The Tonight Show and is a new father. Please give him a huge Portland welcome. To Dan Rosenberg. They say their name last. Boom. The audience will always say the name last. Rule number 10, get the intro right. That's why it's so important. Ask for the intro, get the name right, say it properly. Every little thing you screw up, you could take a comic that's fantastic and you screw up their intro and they come up on stage pissed off. I had somebody, I used to do a, a stupid thing when I started. And I would tell them uh, to say I was on Letterman and Seinfeld. And this was like open mics. Say I was on Letterman, just say this next comic has been on Letterman and Seinfeld. Oh, no, I writes for, that's what it was. He writes for Letterman and Seinfeld. And then I would say, no, I wrote to Letterman and Seinfeld. I'm still waiting for them to write me back. And of course, MCs would screw that up all the time. So... Get that. And if you don't have anything, you know, you and you have to make something up, you know, this next, don't say clubs and colleges. I think that's overdone. Just say, you know, your next comic, good friend of mine, you can say that if you want. Uh, you don't say this next comic's funny. It's a comedy club. They better be. Or I think you're really going to be excited to see this next comic. I know I am. Put your hands together for Dan Rosenberg. That's a great intro if you didn't get an intro. If, you know, the comic came in late, comic came in while you're still on stage and you see them arrive, you don't have an intro for them. That's a good one to use. Uh, rule number 11, keep the show rolling. If the comic before you does well, just come up and bring up the next comic. If the comic before you bombs, you might need to do a couple of minutes to bring the room back. Again, you're trying to be that line. You're trying to be that nice base foundation. I know I keep saying that, but uh, yeah. And now if somebody totally just slaughters, I mean, they kill. There's a lot of killing and bombing and dying in comedy. Uh, if a comic just kills, what you want to do is say to the next comic, do you want me to do a couple or are you ready to go right on? Because some comics are like, oh, I can't follow that. And they want you to bring it down. So you go up, reset the stage, maybe talk to the audience for a second, maybe make an announcement, and then bring up the next comic. Rule number 12, never bitch about the room or the size of the crowd. What good does that do? It's just negativity. You're going to, you're supposed the, you're the positive, happy party, party goer. You're the guy or gal. You're the person. Just get up there. Don't complain about the room. Why are you there? 
You know, you know, if the room's such a piece of crap, why are you, how, how bad of a comic are you if you're in that room? You can make fun of yourself all you want. Don't make fun of the room. They're trying, they, they're paying you or you're, or you're putting the show on at the room and it's your show and you're booking the room. Why would you make fun of the room? And especially don't make fun of the crowd. They're the ones that are there. They should, you know, treat every show like it's the big show. Uh, rule number 13, always ask the booker or club owner what announcements you want them to make. This is so easy. Just ask whoever's producing the show, any announcements you need me to make. Ask that ahead of time. Write it down. Because there's nothing worse than you're on stage and they call out something. Hey, don't forget to tell them about the drink special. It's not professional. It doesn't look good. Ask ahead of time. When you announce upcoming shows, don't do it before the headliner. Like, can you imagine you're the headliner and you know, people walk up and they're like, all right, you guys ready for your headliner? Well, next week, we've got someone even bigger and better. Boy, you guys missed out by coming this week. Don't do that. Put it earlier in the show or put it after the headliner. Uh, rule number 14, always have the tools of the trade. This is a good one. I like this one. Three by five cards. Now, of course, most people just do it in their phone now. 2006 when I wrote this, uh, I might have had a cell phone. It was probably a flip phone. I don't think texting was a thing yet. Well, MySpace was a thing already. I know that because that's all over this book. There's no Facebook in this book. Three by five cards to write things down. Pens, multiple pens. Comics are always losing pens. Have a few available if comic wants to write their set list down. They're going to be your friend. Stopwatch, okay, it's probably on your phone. A pen light, again, probably on your phone if you need to light, light somebody. Spare microphone clip. There's one. Invest a few bucks, have a spare microphone clip. I, I used to always carry a microphone, a clip. I had lights in my, in my trunk. I had a speaker in my trunk, a mic stand. I had everything in case something broke. I had a portable comedy club I could just take with me when I was on the road. Uh, ne oh, rule number 15, huge. Never make fun of the wait staff. Do you know why you never make fun of the wait staff? Uh, number one, they're working for tips. So if you make fun of them, and it's and it's something that the audience agrees with you, they it may su they may suffer. You may hurt their paycheck. But the bigger reason is more selfish. At the end of the night, the end of the week, and you're you're in a comedy club, and the manager will talk to the staff. Who do you like? Who should we bring back? Oh, that guy that was there last week. That was a feature. He was so much better than the headliner. Or, oh, he's great. That or oh, she's great. Oh, they're they the way you interact with the staff is very important to your future bookings. Also, you never know who that person might be in the future. There are a lot of former doormen, bartenders, waitstaff that are now major comedy club managers, major comedy club owners, major comedy club producers. You never know who's going to be there. If I'm not mistaken, Gwen Stefani used to be a waitress at the Improv in Irvine. So I don't know how that could help your career. But uh, oh, another thing you might get, you might get a few free drinks out of it. So that's always good. Uh, rule number 16, don't rip on other comics when you're on stage. You're the MC. It's not likable when you rip on other comics. It goes right back to the rule. Now, if it's in good fun, you've worked with a comic a lot, and you guys are riffing, that's totally different. That's not what I'm saying. But if somebody bombs, don't even acknowledge it, especially if you're doing an open mic. It's just mean, and you might discourage someone who could be a potential rock star someday because the first open mic they go to they get made fun of. And then they, for five years, they don't show up again. And you, that's, I've heard of that happening. I've heard of comics that just did so poorly and they were so intimidated, they quit. And then they came back and now they're, they're big stars. So maybe you help them by them quitting. Who knows? Uh, rule number 17. We're almost done. Can you believe it? Rule number 17. As the host of the party, you should always dress for success. T-shirts. Yeah, I'm wearing a T-shirt and a hat right now. So I'm exactly... The opposite of what I'm what I'm preaching here, but as the MC, people should be able to tell you're an important person, you're part of the show. Uh, you you should always dress nicer than the audience, in my opinion. Uh, I've always been anti hat. I started wearing hats more often uh, in my comedy special. I wear a hat that is coming out soon, but when you're watching this, it might not have come out yet. But it's here on YouTube if you want to watch it. Uh, but that's just because I'm going bald. 
But the problem with, with the hat is if the club has l lights that are right here, it's going to shadow your eyes and they can't see your eyes. The audience needs to see your eyes. They need to interact with you. That's why you shouldn't wear sunglasses on stage either. Uh, don't look like a homeless guy is what I'm saying. Just dress nice. Uh, rule number 18. This sounds like something Larry David would say, but do the wait and shake. Also a very important rule. When you're introduced to the next comic, stand on the stage and wait for them to get there. Shake their hand or a fist bump or a pat on the shoulder, something, and then walk off. It's like you're handing the baton off to them. It is a visual endorsement from you, the likable host, to the next to the audience to say, this is a good comic. You're, you're passing the baton to them. And it also keeps the stage. You never want an empty stage. Now, there are some comics I've had that say, introduce me and walk off stage because they have a music cue or they have a thing they do. That's different. Don't go to the comic. Well, Dan Rosenberg says in his book you should do No, don't do that. If the comic wants something different, do that. But overall, always do the wait and shake. Uh, rule number 19, if you have to sell, sell. And what I mean by that is if a comic says, hey, can you mention my T-shirts? You know, I just did a show the other night and two of the comics were selling stuff. One of them forgot to mention uh, throughout her whole act that she had merchandise for sale, but she left something on, up on stage under a speaker. And the headliner, he mentioned it, but then I went back on stage and I said, hey folks, show's, show's pretty much done. We're, you know, thank you so much for coming. Hey, look, we've got some merch. And I held up both their merchandise. I plugged it. I said, this is great stuff. High quality cotton, triple, triple whatever. You know, make, some, make, make it nice. But then while they're in the lobby getting set up to sell stuff, you're kind of, you know, talking to the audience, giving them the rules of, the, you know, drive safe, uh, fill out your comment cards, whatever the rules are the club might have. And then you're helping them sell. So don't find yourself, you, don't be like, oh, I'm, I'm above this. I'm not selling for people. Rule 20, never do material after the headliner. The comedy show officially ends when the headliner is done. Never do material. Now you can be entertaining if you're doing a plug, talk about who the next comic is coming next week or whatever, but don't do material. Don't refer to anything in their act, nothing. Just the show's over. Well, thank everybody for coming and move on. Rule 21, use a callback, but use it wisely. When you're emceeing, you do get the opportunity to come back on stage multiple times. Uh, you know, there's, if you, if you do a callback to, A, the previous show, obviously you don't want to do that, but you also don't want to step on another comic's material. So it depends on how you use the, the callback. Rule 22, this probably ties into the last one. Stay sober. Don't get drunk when you're on stage or high. It doesn't, there's nothing worse than well, a comedian falling off stage drunk, that's, that's horrible. But, you know, you can drink all you want after the show. But if you're, if you're getting drunk during the show, unless it's one of the shows where, you know, it's, you know, like, like the shows where they smoke pot or they drink and get people drunk into a second, that's totally different. I'm saying, as the MC, you have to be consistent and slurring your words later in the show. I remember a club that had a two drink maximum rule for comedians. That's all they were allowed. Uh, not because they're being cheap, because they didn't want comics to get too drunk. Rule 23, be prepared for anything. As I said before, uh, have a mic, mic clip, you know, have little extra things with you if you're on the road. You never know what will happen. I was at a show once in Ohio. Uh, while the MC was on, the microphone went out. They didn't have a backup microphone. I didn't have a backup microphone. The sound system still worked. We had no microphone. So the feature act is up there and they're doing it without a mic. And all of a sudden the light blew. They only had one spotlight. Pfft, it fizzled out. So now I go up, no mic, no spotlight. I was just praying the stage didn't collapse and it wasn't that big of a stage to start with. So I did it an hour with no mic and no light. So be prepared. Uh, one time I also had to do an entire show killing time for another comic who went to the wrong city two hours away. That's in the book. It's a funny story. Rule number 24, only one rule left. You stuck around, only one rule left. Treat every show like it is the show. 
And what do I mean by that? Just because there's eight people and it's an open mic, get up there and do your best. You never know who's in the crowd. You never know whose cousin is a casting director who's been talking to their cousin about this movie they're shooting. They're looking for this quirky redheaded person. Or uh, you never know if there's going to be some morning show uh, producer who's looking for a character for their radio show. And then all of a sudden you're doing this character called Larry the Cable Guy. That's what happened to Dan Whitney, sort of. But still, you never know who's in the audience. You could be in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, you're like, ah, I'm not going to put on, I'm not going to put on my suit tonight. I'm not going to give it every, there's only 100 people here. I, I usually do only 300. I only used to, I only do theaters. It's a little club. It doesn't matter. Treat every show like it is the most important show you've ever done. Because the people watching it, it might be the only show they've ever seen, or it might be the only show they see this year. Give them the best show possible. And finally, and I will say this to you, rule number 25, say thank you. Thank you right off the bat for liking and subscribing. Thank you for tuning in. I know this first video is kind of long, but it's all 25 rules for free. Again, you can buy the book if you want to. Uh, we'll put a link. But also tune in because we're going to occasionally be doing, you know, whether it's weekly or every other week, a podcast with comedians and people in the comedy industry going over each rule. So we have 25 guests over the next period, or hopefully year, if we do one every other week. And we'll talk about these rules and share stories of how they impacted our lives. Uh, this one is say thank you. You should also always say thank you to the audience. They, they came out of their way to come see you and the rest of the comics in the show. Thank the booker. Thank the staff. And I don't mean just from stage. Like, walk up to the staff afterwards. Thank them. Say, thank you so much for being a great server. Thank you for, for you know, dealing with the customers tonight. Thank you for keeping the customers in line. Thank you, you know, for making great food. Because a lot of times you get free food. Thank the managers. And always tip. If you get free food, figure out what the tip should have been and tip double. Always. Make that a rule that you follow. That's not in the book. I'm just adding that. Uh, yeah. So that's it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Uh, if there's any rules that you want to add to the 25 rules, things that aren't in the book, because a lot has changed in the last 18 years, uh, feel free to put in the comments. I did not update this yet. I just did it right out of the book. So we probably will be doing some updates as well. But again, like, subscribe, stay tuned, and thank you again for tuning in for the podcast on hosting. And uh, that's it. Bye-bye. <laughs>